Pishan Satkan, Pishan Satchoch, a massa nil, you hold your stitch higher coch. Shuan Shunik Palace is stoop your kimbi. You hunk uti, canib a yup, chin high you get to hun each panel go eat yet to cohich mam. You hold your stitch higher coch. My name is Juan Francisco and I speak. Mayak and Hobal, one of the 31 Mayan languages that still exist. Um, today, Kanib Ayyub, April 2nd, I come and present with pleasure this topic that interests me and influenced me on my ch ch choose of study, uh, the antiquity and colonial music of the Maya world. So who are the Mayas? So the Mayas, in a, inhabited men the Yucatan Peninsula of Mexico, Guatemala, Belize, El Salvador, and Honduras. Uh, the white dots represent many of the major temples, center culturized. Uh, there's Chichen Itza, Mani, Calakmul, Tikal, Palenque, and Bonampak. And I included my hometown of Holomkonop, Santa Eulalia. So in around 200 BC, that's where they started to incorporate and build the mag magnificent temples, sculptures, and they, that's when they started to date their the long cal calendar. And in the 700s, that's when they reached their, their highest point where like all the major temples were already created. And in around 900, they mysteriously vanished and abandoned their temples due to political infrastructure and warfares. But though they continued to thrive, uh, they thrived until the Spanish Inquisition. And some production, they they did was they built sophisticated hieroglyph scripts, magnificent temples, impressive visual arts such as the codices, paintings, ceramics, and hieroglyphic incisions on woods and stones. So uh, we see on the left corner we see Kinich Hanap Pakal sarcophagus in Palenque, Mexico. And here we see Tikal in Guatemala. And up here is one of the codices that survived over the years. It's the Dresden Codex that is in Dresden, Germany. Uh, their philosophy, uh, the Mayans believed in a structure of the cosmos must be proportionated and s sustained with offerings. So in the picture we see right here, they're doing a Mayan ceremony on December 21st, 2012. It was when the Mayan calendar started over so like in our Gregorian calendar when December 31st goes into January 1st. They also believe in a view of a cyclical time so the human history repeats itself like the body of the celestial that goes across the sky day and night. They believe in the prophecies, divinations, and oracles. So down here we see the Madrid Codex. It describes many of their calendars, rituals, and daily activities which combines into their rituals and ceremonies. Uh, their musical instruments, they had two types of music instruments. They had the percussion and aerophones. Uh, the first drum is called a kayum. It's a ceramic drum that's shaped into two vessels connected together and at one end it has a stretched animal membrane over it. And we see here is an, a picture excerpt from the Dresden Codex. Uh, this percussionist, he's playing a kayum. Another drum is the pash. It's an upright kettle hand drum, hollowed wood with a stretched deer membrane over it. And there's the tunkul, which is a horizontal hollow wood that has two lateral tongues that has, is cut in between and is played with rubber mallets. They also have a rasp drum. So on the drum, like there is a T carved into the drum 
and connecting from the head of the drum to the rasca is a string. And when it is scraped with the rasca, it produces a vibration through the strings that creates a, a jaguar roar sound. Uh, they also have the mak, which is a turtle or a tortoise shell, and is usually played with the antler of a deer. And the most common of the percussion instruments is the gourd rattle. Uh, so it's made of gourd with sometimes dried up seed inside. They're aerophones. So they had whistles known as ocarinas and they're usually made from deer leg bone. And sometimes with ceramic forms, they are usually made in the forms of birds, frogs, monkeys, etc. They also had flutes that were made from human leg bones, deer femurs, reeds, and ceramics. And they had trumpets. Most, the most common trumpets they had was the large conch shells. They were abundant on the coast of the Yucatan Peninsula where there were shallow waters, which was easy to get in the water. And they you had wooden and ceramic trumpets that they were made and usually five feet in length. A uh, type of music they used was, they had sacred music and secular music. In their sacred, they had used the music in rituals, processions, cer ceremonies, sacrificial purposes, and dances. And they're secular, they used instrumental music for the elite hierarchy, entertainment for the hierarchy, and performance of operas, and, and usually with wars, they would use trumpets for the sound of when they encounter and to let them know that they're, they're, their presence in there. Um, here we have a picture of Chichen Itza. El Castillo, they, do, they did rituals and then they would process down the walkway to the sacred cenote. And when they arrive at the sacred cenote, they would do their sacrificial ceremonies and which also incorporate music. And here we see a mural from Bonapac, Mexico. Bonapac is about uh, 100, so 100 miles southwest of Tikal, Guatemala. Um, the top one is a drawing of the mural, and the picture in the, mir in the middle is the actual mural. Um, but that one square right there is actually on one wall, and the middle one is actually on another wall, and the, this other portion is on another wall. So it's three walls combined. Uh, in the picture we see, we see uh, an or orchestra accompanying with to an opera we see. So we see a whistle down at the end, uh, two ceramic trumpets, and six actors with costumes. And we see three mock players, the, the turtle players, and a kettle drum, hand drum, and five gourd rattles. So there's this quote from Chilambalam. The raisin wood standard shall come, our Lord come Itza. Our elder brother comes, O men of Tantun. Receive your guests, the bearded men, the men of the East, the bearers of sign of God, Lord. As a prophecy declared by Chilambalam. And it actually occurred when, on March 4th, 1517, when Conquistador Hernando de Cordoba sailed on the east coast of the Yucatan. So in this quote, Chilambala mentions, O oh Lord, Itza. Itza were the peoples that lived in the area of Chichen Itza. Our elder brother comes, O oh men of Tantun. The Tantun people, they lived in the island of Cosmal. 
So, you know, they were the ones that were warned first and had encountered and saw the arrivals of the Spanish. <coughs> and it wasn't until 1697, Noch Peten, the last Mayan city of the Itza Mayan kingdom, was conquered by the Spaniards. Uh, Spanish influence. Um, they brought over their architecture, they started building new houses, villages, towns, fortifications, and churches. Um, the Spanish high monarch back in the, during the time, they were devoted Catholics, so they had promoted Catholicism in their realm. And what the Catholics brought over was their priests, their rituals, saints, liturgic, acculturations, and their music. Uh, one of the known priests was Diego de Landa. He was born in Spain. He's a French, I mean a Franciscan monk, and he was responsible to com for converting the Mayas. And he was also responsible for, for the 1562 burning of the Mani archives. So his intention to burn the archive, archive was that he had heard of rumors that the new converted Mayas were continuing to idol and practice their Mayan religion. And so that brought Diego to Mani, which was a, uh, one of the main temples during when the Spaniards had arrived. And he had found in the archives that had contained the superstitions and lies of the devil of, of what he thought it was. <coughs> So what, had, what was burned in that time was all the books, the codices, and references of, of priests and schoolmasters. Also, there was wooden idols, inscriptions, and glyphs that were also burned as well. And it damaged one of the world's richest literary traditions of the New World. And here's a famous quote from Charles Gallen Kamp. Landa committed an act of wanton destruction, which was to rob future scholars of the most potential valuable sources of information. Another friar is a Dominican friar by the name of Bartolomo de las Casas. He's a historian born in Spain and he was named protector of the Indians by the church because he had plead for better treatments for the Native Americans. And during his time uh, to converting the Mayas, he undertook a peaceful ev evangelization. He had composed ballads in the local Mayans to help convert them. Um, he taught them to curious Mayas, and most, the most majority were the merchants that were going in and out of the Providence during the time. And he was the first Spanish friar to influence the Mayas on, in music. So music was used as a tool to connect and convert the Mayas. Early church repertoires, they used was that it came from Morales, Vic Victoria, and Palestrina. And Maestros de Capilla in the Mayan world, they were responsible to train and teach the Mayan, musician, the Mayan musicians. They taught him to sing chants, motets, polyphonic masses, villancicos, etc. And they also taught him to play European instruments such as the recorder, the flute, the sham, the dulcian, the sakba, and the reed organ. Also, no very well-known MCDs composers of Guatemala were Gaspar Fernandez, who was a Portuguese composer, and Pedro Bermudez, a Spanish composer. These two had developed in created a max of, of repertoires during the time. And many of their compositions reflected culture unique mixtures of European Baroque, Mayan language, and the African rhythm. 
So Libro de Santa Eulalia Puya Matlan is a, known as the Lily Library in Guatemalan Manuscript. Uh, it is a 16th century manuscript collection that was found in Santa Eulalia, where with Tenango. It was founded in the 1960s. And the repertoires exemplified like the finest musics in the Maya world. And here's this quote that the Mayans were the ones that preserved and kept safe the legacy of a European music that was brought over by the missionaries. And what the contains in the manuscripts were the signatures of the three MCDC. MCD, Mateo Hernandez, Francisco de Leon, and Tomas Pascual. And most likely, they, they were composed by anonymous Mayans. And the music generally that was contains was choral music and instrumental music. Choral music such as the ordinary masses, Latin hymns, chants and polyphonic masses, and the instrumental music they had was the French dance of the Paviana. And some excerpts of the manuscripts, the first one is called Arcangel Mikael. So what we heard was a responsory psalm chant that was sing, sing in the medieval Latin. Uh, the next one is called Christe Redemptor Omnium. So what we heard was an office hymn that was in Latin. Uh, the next one is an instrumental excerpt called Pabania. And the next one is called Hoy Hacemos Fiesta. So this one was a Viancico with instrumental accompaniment. So what we went over today was who were the Mayas? They were the ones incorporated in the inhabitants of Guatemala, the Yucatan, and their philosophies of the view of a cyclical time that the human history repeats itself as the human celestial bodies that go across the sky every night and day. Their, their instruments and the type of music, secular and sacred music, and the music in the aftermath of the Spanish Inquisition, the influence that the Spaniards brought, Catholicism was the main 
majority that influenced the Mayans and the new music of repertoires, composers, and European instruments. And last was the newly found music discovery in the mid 19th century. The collection of the century, the 16th century music manuscripts from Santa Eulalia, Guatemala. Thank you. <laughs> Any questions? Yes? Uh, my inspiration was to get to know my identity, more of my, the history of where my people came from and what influenced their beliefs. Because I, what well, I could say about myself, I am Catholic, so this has a big impact on who I am. And that's my inspiration of the, my project. Yes? Uh, no, uh, now we're starting to bring back the, uh, the ancient music instruments, but with, but with the Catholicism that was brought over, the, it was the church that, was, that had control of the mind, so you know, that we couldn't really do much with the music, but now we're starting to bring back in the, the instruments back. Yes? Uh, yeah, the manuscripts was located and hidden in the, the church of Santa Eulalia, and it was missionaries from the Americas or North America, the United States, that went over during the year and was trying to go and find what new music that the Mayans had, and they came across the manuscripts of Santa Eulalia in the church, just hiding and being preserved. Thank you.